involved in college esports, one of the biggest things that I was pushing was that like a lot of the skills that we put into esports from like every angle can still apply to other real world applications. Yeah. Like when you really break down the stuff that we do, it's a media industry. Yeah, the so only that's... reason why I got my job is like coincidentally through like my background working like with 2G gaming. That's something I could definitely tell anybody. Like, I granted I work at four in the morning. I, I get up for work at four in the morning for the time being. But like, yeah, the only reason why I got my job is like years and years of like, oh yeah, I have like three years of experience like working in tournament events. Yeah. You can, yeah, and, and it go. They like that a lot of like literally a lot of companies really enjoy that effort you put in. I mean, I, I've told y'all before. I I live literally twenty minutes away from the uh, the main ESPN uh, broadcast center in Bristol, Connecticut, and I plan to I, I use my experience from there and people I know who work there because you need connections too. But uh, I plan I want to work there one day, and this is a big gateway for me to find my way into a job that is like that in the industry. So. Uh, not only is this a lot of fun for me, but it's a it's it's a segue into what could be a, a, a you know a great future. Uh, so I, I I love doing it, and I, I see people who ask all the time. It's like, hey, how do you get into commentary? How do you get invested with this? And just ask honestly. We're, we're, everybody's a normal person, the same as your, your favorite players. Everybody is just human, enjoying themselves playing a game, and you can easily get yourself involved if you try. So uh, I, I hope that with more people getting invested. Uh, with offline coming back, we could see some more. As we wait for some more matches, because I don't know what's going on here, but we're currently waiting for you and 8 Man. It seems like 8 Man might be taking a momentary uh, lapse in picking the stage. Yeah, he's actually updated me and you... Sorry, yes, he, he, he... Sorry, sorry, he updated us and he uh, he is using the restroom. Ah, I got you. Competitors got to take care of themselves. Everybody has got to... Uh, relieve themselves after a long long bracket sometimes it happens yes david we are normal real people i know what a weird concept right <laughs> um but honestly with this match uh coming up next i think this one is going to be one that you want to clear head anyways because both of them play similarly except mega man has to work a little bit harder for it but the difference is ape man and uh, is got to understand that no matter what your recovery isn't uh, as safe as it was in the previous matchups. Downer is massive. You are a huge hitbox. Also, if you recover high too much, back air, very strong move, can KO pretty early. So you have to find your way into center stage control while navigating around all of the short hop pellets and such and the usage of saw uh, or the buzz, uh, like the buzz saw. So I'm curious to see how Ape Man approaches this matchup. I don't think that necessarily he's going to struggle but it, from what we saw from you earlier i think you is a very very smart mega man and i think that the way that he played around xavier with a pretty similar concept with uh we fit i think he could definitely give a man a lot of trouble yeah on paper this matchup is just lambs to the slaughter for rob <laughs> it has so many ways of controlling space here and i think it all starts and ends with the mega buster Pellets are going to be interrupting so many little situations between that and Metal Blade and Leaf Shield. There's a ton of ways that you could just outright stop 8-Bit from playing his game. And before you even get your own game plan going, being able to tell the Rob to stop playing is so important. Yeah, we just saw it right off the start there, right? And 8-Bit Man answering right back. You know, he used all those pellets to, for one, remove control of the gyro because it does stop. It, it stops it in his tracks with the, with the pellets. And he got the jab lock, but Ape Man answering right back with those better boxing buttons up close. Well, you always has to approach kind of with a saw in hand. Ape Man doesn't need to always have to approach with that gyro. And I think that's going to be a big back and forth with this matchup. But right now, off stage, this is where things can get very scary. Gyro interrupting the at uh, attempt at the ledge. And you know what's funny? These two are both like quote unquote zoners, and yet they are scrapping. Yeah, they've got excellent kill options up close, and I feel like you has been approaching this really interestingly with the edge guard. Seeing him coming from hella high, trying to net the down air to make sure that 8-bit is going for a low or sort of like lateral recovery, and you cover that space really well, and you can maintain the pressure. Excellent use yeah. of back end. 
Yeah, that was such a good shield poke right there. Cross them up, put the pressure on, basically force them to hold shield because of the potential of just getting hit by any raw hit and instead takes the back air. But right now, you got to watch out for your ledge coverage. That Nair will not do it, but the gyro toss will. All right, dead even game practically, and it's all a matter of who can get in. This is really aggressive projectile play. I wasn't quite expecting from Aether, but definitely necessary to stay alive in this matchup. Because just yeah, like gotta... I said, like, the Mega Buster, that's how Mega Man controls this matchup. If he doesn't get a chance to press that button, he doesn't really have much input on what's going on. What the hell is the size of that hitbox? Mega Man's boots are... Uh, this man is rocking, like, the size 15 Tims out in NY right now. <laughs> he caught him with the get-up attack and now finds his way back in to single hit off of the neutral air, but unfortunately for him, gets put into a tech chase. Yep, go for the grab, get the guaranteed damage. And I, I like the fact that he didn't go for off air right there. Mega Man is a big boy, and all you gotta do is just close out the edge guard. Amazing play from 8-Bit. I was just about to couple in with you on that one. The way that 8-Bit was just focusing purely on getting the damage and pushing out the ledge was so smart, because I feel like all oh the God. pressure that all hold off his back air, this arm rotor, it's not enough. Oh, good, good tech, tech as well. Honestly, mm -hmm. you know what's you know what's funny from the Mabel set, Apeman Man has got to be super mentally awake off stage right now because Mabel went off stage repeatedly going after him, and actually even even PK Chris went off stage at once. So those attempted backers are not going to matter anymore in game one because that is an arm rotor to take game and put, putting a point on the board for uh, Ape Man. Clutch plays are super important for Ape because I feel like while the battle's on the ground, Mega Man and literally every tool in Mega Man's disposal, barring dash attack, are going to be able to push out Rob and make coming back to the stage a living nightmare. But once Mega yeah. Man doesn't have his boots on the ground, he can't effectively get Metal Blade. It, using Leaf Shield is suicide. And he can't really effectively control space because Rob can augment his speed in the air so well. Between just how you use the booster, between how back air is there, it, like Rob's edge guards are just the easiest thing in the world for him against Mega Man, and, but at the same time, the most important. Yeah, and like a big thing was just like Ape It Man's consistent punish game was on point. He kept, he found the forwarders and then he would get him all the way to the ledge Ready? off of one interaction, with, which was so important because you need to keep Mega Man stuck there, off stage in a very bad spot, make him feel uncomfortable about trying to recover, and just. If you don't get those punishes, pushing them and getting positional advantage, you're probably going to struggle. Because we saw exactly what happened at the beginning of the matchup, where you found one opening in center stage, and he got big damage out of it. So Ape Man was able to put a stop to that real quick. I mean, I can definitely see Rob being perfectly fine with the stage open in this matchup by comparison to, say, the other matchups. Because we haven't really seen Smash will be available, but... This is exactly why it doesn't matter because you get to once again put yet yeah, he, he's got another up B. I don't know if he's gonna make it back. Yeah, he gets covered, but not the sweet spot of the down air. Who you gets a second chance. What a rough start to that game too, though. I think that's pretty emblematic of what we're gonna be seeing moving forward because there's plenty of space here where Megan's gonna be able to box, and you're gonna see a ton of that back air. The move is fairly disjointed and deals plenty of damage, but if it gets his opportunity at the ledge, that's curtains for you. Yeah, then they, they are, again, this is just guns a-blazing. They are fighting all the way throughout. There's no long distance play. There's no waiting out. Ape Man calling. Oh my God, the perfect space. Oh. <gasps> well, how do you even, how do you even mentally prepare to attack that? How, how do you remember, like, what the hell? You you gotta watch out for the side pressure. B to get that. And then the forward air follow up. Yeah, look, Charlie, you might be onto something, but it, we're used to this. <laughs> the up air is gonna take him out though. And Ape Man evens it back up. Oh, that was, it's so rough, man. It, like, both of these characters, once they get their game plan going, there's just no room to escape. They both can go off stage really well. They can both shark that platform amazingly. Like, we're gonna see reversals in momentum really fast. Yeah. There's just no ways about it. And one of the things that Ape Man has to watch out for whenever he's in center stage two is that it's pretty easy for you to set up a tech chase into leaf shield jab lock setup on that center platform, go into falling up air, into like follow up up airs. It's so good at getting big damage on, on Rob, but he hasn't been able to get that so far because it's just Ape Man's defense has been on point, even though it's relatively even right now, but the damage could be much worse if he was able to capitalize big on those openings. 
I feel like a lot of these interactions have actually just been huge shifts in stage control, but nothing real big as far as wrecking up the damage. It's just the fact that they're both fighting so often that they're putting the numbers on, but also why we haven't seen too many kills until now. Just like that, the Lich from Bear looking really good from you. Yeah, and that's not something you get often against Rob. Rob will all, almost always be swinging up air at the ledge to back you off. It's very similar to anytime you stare at a DDD, you know that up air is coming. But the mental awareness to know this is the time. This is the time where he's going to go for it. And then you capitalizing on it, very big. Now, I, I kind of like what you're doing a little bit here. Waiting at the ledge. You're at 160. Play counter grab. Uh, play counter grab. What note I want to bring up this is a couple of times in this game alone. We've seen David do the typical up air from the ledge or below the ledge so that he could fish a safe recovery of the stage. And you were going for these high up, uh, down airs. The hard knuckle is heavily disjointed. So, oh, speaking of which, right on cue. <laughs> and as a tool, it's fantastic for being able oh. to take out Rob. <laughs> Especially if it's gonna hit him in the base. <laughs> yeah, man, that is easily one of the biggest issues that you have to worry about when you're robbing this matchup and you finally capitalizing on it as the set progressed. You called it out at the right time. That down air is the best way to condition a Man from going for those up airs at ledge. It makes it easier to get that ledge trump set up, which is probably why a Man was once again swinging with those up airs because you just got ledge trump back air to last stock. Now that's in your head. And the last thing you wanna do is buffer a roll directly onto ledge when there's a very reactable up tilt to shore you and kill you so that was a really good adjustment by you in game two even though at the very beginning it was looking like it was going to be another 8-bit man win That's funny, i was going to start talking at some point about how much he's been using these down airs and how the move is a little bit wider and really disjointed because the way that we've been seeing you try to cover space has been at that lateral space right around the ledge, but not really committing to jumping too deep. I think the end of that game right there showed exactly why you have to be careful for that down air. That was a mess. All right, look, I am, I, I can't believe, I, I can't believe I have to make a comment about this. Why am I looking at chat right now and seeing Sean with that emote? Animated emotes were a mistake. That's all I'm gonna say. Luckily, I don't think the YouTube video is gonna be able to see that. So getting into this next game here, we got game number three. Uh, I'm pretty sure we saw a stage switch and I wouldn't be surprised if we, oh, actually we're going to town and city. So it seems like Ape Man is going more for the route of, I have some platforms to camp. I probably don't have PS2 available to me anymore. You probably banned it on them. And you're gonna go ahead and just like, try and get some early KOs off the side. Even though back here from Mega Man is also a bit more viable now as well. Yeah, no, there's actually a lot of ways that this stage peels out really well for both of these characters. For one thing, and we've seen this right off the bat, you using up air to shark out the class is going to deny a lot of safe passage to 8-bit. And look at this, this pressure at the ledge. Yeah, Even this is though a... Rob has so many ways to get around, none of it's safe because Mega Man's tools are perfectly suited for covering this wide space. Yeah, it like, that's exactly what you need to see out of you. Oh my God, trying to go for the high call out on that up B, thinking that he's gonna be scared to go to ledge and maybe try to go for a down air. So oh, Ape Man mixing it up good, but th this is the thing throughout the entire set, right? You does get damage on, but he gets it on after like five interactions. Ape Man gets it on after like two. And that's just a big thing of his, his punish game. You cannot let that big start go away. And that is a great way to do it. Man followed him all the way off the top after that up air. Knew he wasn't going to jump because you don't jump after that up air. Just waited for the reaction after with the forward air. That was so clean. That was a read. You saw how fast he fell with the rush coil to make sure he can get that? That was amazing. Look, all right. I haven't seen this move a lot recently because it's been a while since I've watched it with Mega Man's, but I'm being reminded just watching it how it, it, Leaf Shield is such a tilting move to get hit by every single move. Also, that move's pretty tilting too. <laughs> Arm Rotor gonna find himself a payoff stage. Yeah, Leaf Shield is amazing shield pressure, and especially with Metal Blade in hand, there's damn near nothing that you could do to Mega Man. He has a safe way of being able to pressure you out, and one thing that's worth pointing out. Rob being as big as he is, with this substantial shield pressure, moves are bound to shield poke with little effort from you. So, I feel like Ape has gotta be more evasive in this movement because his shield is constantly getting shredded. Yeah, we're seeing uh, we're seeing you almost kind of like respond accordingly, right? Because you saw the Ape Man started going for a bit more of a zoning pressure, like at well, a zoning attempt at the ledge. Started throwing gyro, started throwing laser, trying to back him off. But what did you do in kind? Immediately started going for 
uh, the, like all the short hop elements. And then immediately tries to mix it up after that forward air last time, try to catch maybe a jump away or an air dodge out. Like, you, you has figured something out as this set has progressed. I'm point out right here, now you're an animal. Because he went for a shield break when he had the crash bomber on 8-bit. They're like, that's what I mean about the shield pressure. Like, this is nuts. And, you know, highlighting once again the zoning game, because I feel like 8-bit's really stepped his game up with how he's utilizing the laser and how much he's retreating and making use of giant. <laughs> but it's still not enough. Amazing pressure from you. He's coming in deep with the down airs. Now 8-bit on all stuff here. But we're reading <laughs> I was just about to make oh, fun of Rob's no. big old head getting hit by that down air, but uh, you know what? You keep that head. You keep that five head. Just standing there waiting for the roll in with that up smash. Gonna take it out. And now this is in a bad spot. The early up B does get him out of that situation, though. Oh, hold on. We're boxing between the gyro. We are going places with this damage. But the falling down air once again. He's so aggressive at a disadvantage where a lot of people would be so scared because of that, like, falling off air. Gets a gyro in hand now, too. This is one of the characters that could definitely work the best with your uh, with your item in their hand. But gets grabbed. Gonna get the up tilt. Good air dodge away. Then you, you better hope that you get another one of those because Ape Man almost catching him with the up smash. It is Town and City, and Me Mega Man is heavy. But one of those now especially should take it out. You know, with these climbing percentages, things are getting really precarious here. Although, these single hit buster shots are working out so well from you, but that was a suspect DI on the Nair. And just like that 8 bit snatching away game for it. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm looking back at the stream right now to see if he was fading back in uh, with some of those lemons. I'm trying, I'm waiting for it to come back up right now because he, he, he exploded. Yeah, he did. Okay. He was floating in and threw a saw down uh, towards rob which caused him to fade in and go straight up because he was holding in so that is great for 8-bit man because he caught you slipping a bit trying to be aggressive um i'm not you know i'm not even gonna comment on on all the shoto statements in chat because i can tell y'all what a shoto actually is canonically in terms of street fighter and y'all are just gonna ignore me anyways so i'll just let y'all have that <laughs> but um I, I do see quite a few goaded names in chat, though. I saw Send, the artist formerly known as Best Ness. I saw Capitancito floating around in here. I saw Charlie, uh, the king, uh, talking in chat before. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, goaded people in the chat, as well as uh, everybody else who is currently having a good old time. Uh, honestly, getting into this next game, how are you feeling about use chances? Because I think you could definitely run it back after that one. Oh, I think he's looking phenomenal right now. Mind you, I'm very optimistic about Mega Man's tools, but the way in particular that you is choosing to fight out of disadvantage, like you've been highlighting, and how he's been controlling the ledge in particular, I think there's just a lot of situations where Apex has got to be careful of his own buttons, because a lot of these scraps are working out really heavily in Mega Man favor. Yeah, and here we go again. Like, it's, this is the thing, though. Like, this, it's the slow game. It's almost like mechanical chic at early percents you you get big you get a lot of damage but it's over a lot of interactions you have to slowly grind to it and then you get your big ko power from that down air and the back airs later on but because he hit him so many times and yet he's still even with ape man that's a big key factor in ape man being able to keep his composure even after getting smacked around a bunch There's so many little situations here and there. I'm honestly impressed with 8-Bit's ability to constantly recompose himself Same. and change it of game plan because he's going between brawling to just outright swinging to zoning and everything in between. Like, he's sliding along a massive spectrum. Oh my god, the option coverage right there. And he misses it all, though. He tried to go for the buzzsaw to push him into it to cover the air dodge. He tried to cover the jump with the back air, but unfortunately missed it all. Ape Man gets to punish it accordingly with that back air. And now Ape Man, if I'm, yeah, if I'm Ape Man, I'm gonna die. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say, you're gonna die. Uh, I'm trying to hang out with the ledge. He is gonna die. He is gonna yep, die because we I, missed those tags. I had future sight. That's, that's what it was. I was looking. I was looking three moves ahead. That's that's that's, that's what's what's going on here. Hey, listen. It's it's rough business because no matter where you are positioned for Mega Man, like the pressure is never ending. Like you've been doing a really good job of mixing up where the blade is being thrown or if it's going to be Z drop. I think that's a huge factor in the pressure of using Metal Blade as a tool. Add that on top of the constant single shots and all of these backers coming out. It's just a relentless flurry of multi hits. But 8-Bit is taking a ton of damage for trying to navigate. 
These two are like animals after like hibernation just looking to eat. Every time they're off stage, they're just getting ready to just swing and punch each other down. But right now, you is doing that slow grind game. Remember, it's only like 3%, 4%, slowly ticked up over time. But he needs to get a nice solid combo, maybe a jab lock to get himself some big damage. Otherwise, he's gonna die to a get up attack punish from that back air. <laughs> Like, I'm gonna say this, follow me on this one, Ajax. Yeah. I feel like as the game's progressed in this particular set, Ape has been getting a little bit more belligerent with his buttons, but I think that's a good thing. I, I agree. It's a really good response to how aggressive you has been. Typically, we look at both of these characters for like just their boxing options and just their zoning options, as opposed to like just using the boxing options to peel and using the projectiles to stay close in. But yeah, Ape is I... taking a page out of use book. And he's been making you look really good at this game four. And I think that is a wow, almost getting punished hard for that one. But I, I think that a majority of what Ape and Man has been struggling with throughout the night is the fact that he's a little bit too scared sometimes to go for that aggressive option in these late game scenarios. And the fact that he's being way more aggressive right now in a lot of them, it's like you can see the confidence building up slowly. And I think he understands. You has to work so much for his damage. It's like, well, if I am a bit more belligerent with my buttons, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk away with way more damage off of two interactions versus his seven. We get so caught out. Yeah, yeah no, I, this situation is so scary. That was He's a time getting right caught there. out. He's got sixty-two oh. percent. There's a lot of opportunity for Mega Man to make that that damage, but I still feel like Ape is just like you've been bringing this up consistently. The fact that Ape is swing, he makes it really count from the damage, from the stage control. Like, he's just making the interactions have more value. Yep, and like, this is... I, I hate to keep bringing it up, but it is the truth at this point. It, it, we are now in a last stock situation, and for some reason, something just happens. Like, a flip just switches, where Ape at Man just... It, like, the, def the defense kind of falters a bit, and people are able to get themselves right back in the game. You has given this right back up. Some people who were freaking out about their points in the bets have a little bit more hope, potentially, unless Ape Man finds himself one of these back airs or a side B at the ledge soon. Yeah, but it's hard to find those buttons in close quarters. Look at this pressure. We're going to see another down air? No, that's another important thing. Those up airs are not going to be able to catch through because of how disjointed the hard knuckle is. Yeah, and you saw what you did right there. He went for, he used the down air to try and bait it out, make it look like he was gonna go for a second one. He hasn't pulled out ledge jump back air in a, quite a bit of time, but he missed it. So now he's forced to ah, die. That's a back air at the ledge. That is covering so many options, and that is it for you. Bracket run. Eight bit man gets to move on into grand finals. Super solid adaptation from Eight bit.